Okay, guys, so last time we we started our first lecture uh, talking generally about the definition of translation. Can someone remember what we said about the definition of translation? So we said something about having so many definitions, but the main question that we should ask ourselves is, yes? Could we translate? Exactly. Can you translate? This is the most important question you will need to answer throughout your life. No one, no client will come and approach you and ask you, what is the definition of translation? But they're going to ask you, can you translate? And by the end of this course, you should be able to say, yes, I can. Okay? Inshallah. Uh, we said that we can be asked to translate any type of texts. There is no one limited type of text someone can can ask you to translate. For example, uh, a person who works at the grocery and this guy receives an email from an, uh, an, ex an importing or an exporting company that's in a different country. So that person is going to be needing a translator. Uh, a, a more, let's say, sophisticated situation would be a foreigner comes to your country and that person needs a translator, or in this case, an interpreter. Uh, if this foreigner was arrested for any reason, the police can call you as a translator. So in any situation in life where language functions, a translator may be needed and that translator may be you okay uh we talked about why we must not use google translator while translating and we said that google mind can never replace human mind and what do we mean when we say translation strategies we explain that these are kind of uh, decisions that you can make while translating and they can offer you different, let's say methods or not methods, different strategies to use while translating. And when we talked about what came first translation theory or practice, we said that anything in life comes first in practice and then people put it into theory in order to protect that science, to protect that profession from loss. When it is kept in books, it's ensured that whatever generation that comes afterwards refers back to these books and learns this profession or learns this practice. Are we learning English to Arabic translation only or is translation a science and these languages are an example? We're going to discuss this in detail later, but let's just say that we are learning an example of what translation practice can be, which means translation is not limited to English and Arabic. It can be two languages, three languages, four languages. It can be no language at all. In fact, you practice translation during the day so many times. When guests come to your house, and your mother looks at you in a very angry manner. What you do is that you translate what she does, right? You translate her facial expressions and your brain understands her message as anger. And then you relate it to something you've done, right? So this is translation. Uh, same thing happens from one language to the same language. You're talking to a, two friends and one friend says something in Arabic, but your friend doesn't get it. She feels puzzled. She feels like, mm, what, what do you mean? And you start explaining. That explanation is also translating, but it happens within the same language. Okay, good? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, we answered these. We mentioned these. Okay. Last time we discussed borrowing. Can someone remind us of what borrowing is? So what's borrowing? 
What's borrowing? It's to, to use the same the same word form uh, another language. Yeah, we are. Hello? Yes, we can hear. Yes. You miss. Yes, we hear you. Okay, I don't I'm gonna have to mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. 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 i am uh, accurate. Excellent. So anyone can tell me why we use borrowing? Why do people, why do translators use borrowing when they translate? What are the two reasons? What are the two reasons? Yes? Yes, I have one. Yeah. Uh, your name? Iman. Iman, yes, Iman, Fadali. Yes. I think Ah, you're uh, the Iman who who was who just yeah. answered. Okay. Zafuna la Iman, but my nas mana sort of Zafuna Bala Iman. Zafuna Msama, Hadish Fatah, Ekhomai, Zaywa. Yes, Iman, yes, Iman, Fadali. 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 Yes, Iman,
وزي ما حكيت بالله اللي بتفتح مايك وبدها تجاوب تحكي اسمها قبل ما تقول انا اول حاجه امم Okay, I'll keep it as a question until the end of the lecture. I'll keep it for the end of the lecture. Keep thinking about it until we get to the end of the lecture, okay? Let's move forward. Literal translation, uh, we said that you use the, the target text's uh, grammar, but you, may, you maintain the same, uh, let's say, the same meaning of the source text. Would you, not the same meaning, because you should always keep the same meaning, but you keep the same sense. You keep the same, uh, let's say, dictionary words of the source text. We said transposition, and I think some of you didn't uh, grasp the meaning, so I added uh, more uh, examples to clarify it. Look at, it is a red car. It is a red car, literally, literal translation would be Hiya Sayaratun Hamra. Why? Because um, it is a pronoun and it's a subject pronoun. So it's Hiya Sayaratun Hamra. But you can always say, or you can say, Innaha Sayaratun Hamra, right? So here, what you did was that you changed the word class that was used in the source text into a different word class that is in the target text. She speaks slowly. This is like the literal translation. This is literal translation. When you remove here and it becomes so you did transposition. When you say you change the word class completely. Right? You see? Yes. Yeah. You yeah. understand? Samah, you raised your hand, yes? I want to ask something now. Um, so according to what you said, uh, it uh, doesn't matter uh, that we will change. Uh, she speaks slowly from uh, So it yeah, doesn't matter. It's completely normal. It's completely normal. If it gives the same meaning, it's completely normal. I remember when I talked translation one, we said that if it is a jumla failiya we should start with the verb. So I don't know. Okay. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I'll tell no, you I want to take I'll your experience. You I, listen, I listen. want to take experience. Listen. Uh, Arabic has verbal sentences. Arabic has nominal sentences. You have the freedom to choose either of these two depending on the text you have. If, it, if you find it more natural to use a verbal sentence, then use verbal sentence. If you find it more natural to use a nominal sentence, then use a nominal sentence. It depends on your style as a translator, and it depends on what you want to emphasize in your translation. Guys, I'm going to send you another link now because this Zoom session has ended, okay? I'll send you another link now. Okay. okay. okay.